21 years ago, uh, my mother, Mona Glass, died from lung cancer. She worked really hard throughout her 53 years of life, uh, caring for me for much of that time. And we, we struggled as a family. And that struggle manifests itself by my mother working two jobs for much of my life and the stress of that resulting in her smoking two packs of cigarettes every day for much of my life. And at the age of 53, she developed non-small cell lung cancer uh, and died within months of that diagnosis. Um, I was in my early 20s and dealt with it as an only child to a single mother as best I could, but there was a, a lot of support not only from friends and families, uh, but from organizations and institutions that helped her throughout her treatment uh, and then helped me after her passing. And that is why I want to honor National Lung Cancer Awareness Month to uplift the organizations and the people who are helping others day in and day out, trying to make the best of what is often bad situations, and by spreading the word that lung cancer is the leading form of cancer, it is preventable, it is treatable, and I am so proud to live in Montgomery County where we have put forth a series of laws and regulations that help pr protect people. You know, it was once controversial when we banned smoking from indoor restaurants. Imagine that, the controversy of keeping people healthy and safe. It was once controversial when we allowed buildings to prohibit smoking from within their own walls. Imagine that, the controversy of trying to keep people healthy and safe. And so I wanna thank everybody who's here, who's joining me. I'm gonna let them go around and introduce themselves and their organizations and share a little bit about the work that they are doing in this space day in and day out. Thank you very much, Council Member. Um, my name is Lance Kilpatrick. I'm the Government Relations Director for the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network uh, covering Maryland. Over 4,000 Marylanders this year will hear the phrase, you have lung or bronchus cancer. And sadly, over 2,000 of them will not survive that diagnosis. The Council Member pointed out correctly the uh, gains we've made through the Clean Indoor Air Act and other things, we need to remain vigilant. Big Tobacco never stops trying to sell their product. And now, frankly, we have Big Cannabis also trying to figure out ways to create exemptions from the Clean Indoor Air Act. And we can't let that happen because it is preventable, but it's only preventable if we don't allow those things to take place. So thank you. Thank you again as well. Uh, my name is Adadar Denny. I am the uh, the manager of government affairs for Go To for Lung Cancer. Uh, much of our work is mainly in the federal space, uh, particularly as we look in uh, those who are never smokers that are now currently getting lung cancer, uh, particularly young people. Um, we've we've really been advocating and really pushing um, this piece of legislation called the Women in Lung Cancer Preventive Services Act of 2024, um, which really really tackles the issue of where we're seeing women, particularly young women. Um, starting to get diagnosed with lung cancer at a much younger rate as well. Um, as well, we're trying to really push the, the five-year survival rate, kind of trying to push that up a little bit more. And of course, um, from the appropriations perspective, trying to get more funding for lung cancer research. As we all know, lung cancer research funding is fairly low compared to other, other cancers. And as you mentioned, it's one of the leading causes of cancer deaths in the United States. And so we're trying to get that that funding to really match the gravity of the situation of lung cancer. Thank you again. I'm Amy Weinberg. I'm with Hope Connections for Cancer Support. We're located right here in Montgomery County. All of our services are free, and our motto is that no one should face cancer alone. We offer 40 support groups and 60 mind-body programs and educational programs throughout the area, both in-person and virtual. We have another center in Prince George's County, and we also have a focus on, prevent, on prevention and tackling race-based disparities in outcomes. So thanks for inviting us. 
Thank you, Councilman Glass, for um, you know this proclamation. My name is Zubair Ansari. I'm the Executive Director for Cancer Support Community, Washington, D.C. Um, we are 200 strong cancer support centers across the globe. Um, however, our first cancer support center in the DMV area was in 2024. So um, we have a lot of work to do. We've been around for 40 plus years. Um, we are agnostic to different types of cancer, but lung cancer is a big piece of our program. We offer free cancer support uh, as well to anybody who is diagnosed with cancer or even impacted, so even the caregivers. Um, we are based in Washington, D.C., but our footprint is all of Maryland, Washington, D.C., and Virginia. So that's about 15 million people that we're trying to help serve. Um, and I think this proclamation will help support um, at least brand awareness for folks that are impacted by lung cancer. So we really appreciate you and your team. Good afternoon. My name is Tony Brantley. I am the uh, co program coordinator for the Community Health um, Partnerships and Initiatives at Suburban Hospital. And at Suburban, we have programs such as Freedom from Smoking, as well as we partner with our local uh, partners in terms of offering the public uh, free cancer screenings. So um, we definitely want to thank you for involving us and having us here today. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Brandon Leonard. I'm the Senior Director of Government Affairs for Longevity Foundation. Um, thank you so much, Council Member Glass, for raising awareness of lung cancer. Um, a lot of what we do at Longevity is to provide community and support to people who are directly impacted by lung cancer through in-person and virtual events and um, um, opportunities to just talk with each other about their experience. Um, we also do a lot of work to, to raise funds for lung cancer research and, um, and to provide grants and do our own research on patient experience. Um, I think we have a, a lot of work that we are, are working on together, our organizations, to improve access to lung cancer screening, um, to diagnostics, and to lung cancer treatment. And I think just two messages that you touched on, um, one is just making sure that people uh, know how prevalent lung cancer is, um, the impact of lung cancer, but also that there's a lot of hope. Um, the treatments, that the the progress that we've made on treatments has been tremendous in the last 10 to 15 years. And so there's a lot of hope for all, of the, all those who are um, impacted and will be impacted by lung cancer. Thank you. Thank you all for sharing more information about what you and your organizations do. This is about prevention, and it is about hope. The strides that I've seen in the, in the medical field, um, if only they existed 23 years ago, my mother could possibly still be with us, but I know her diagnosis would have been longer. Um, and just want to say thank you. And again, lift up the fact that 4,000 Maryland residents every year are diagnosed with lung cancer. So if you know anybody who is struggling or any family members or friends, please look up these organizations and get the help that you all deserve and make sure that we can all continue living in a healthy and safe community. So thank you. And with that, I'll read this proclamation. Whereas lung cancer is the third most common form of cancer, and the leading cause of cancer deaths in the United States. And whereas the American Cancer Society estimates that over 234,000 new lung cancer cases and 125,000 lung cancer deaths will be reported in 2024. And whereas annual screening for tobacco users and people deemed high risk can reduce the lung cancer death rate by as much as 20% by detecting tumors at an early stage when they are more likely to be curable. And whereas we must continue supporting the needs of those diagnosed and undergoing treatment for lung cancer, their friends, their family members, as we continue searching for causes and cures. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the County Council of Montgomery County, Maryland recognizes November as Lung Cancer Awareness Month. And be it further resolved that the council calls upon council, county agencies, local health organizations, and residents to raise awareness about the importance of screening for lung cancer and to support members of the community and their families undergoing diagnosis and treatment. Signed on this, the 12th day of November by myself and Council President Andrew Friesen. Thank you all for your work.